What I learned about friendships changed my life from my father. Well, he taught me about male friendships specifically. Gave me an opportunity to do what he didn't. To be who he couldn't be in friendship. Which was someone that could be deeply trusted. Someone that you could share something of great importance to and with. And they would be present to that. They would be open to that. They would receive that. And they would not judge that. My father was deeply judgmental, harsh in his demeanor, abrasive in his character. You know, he'd be your best friend until you said something or did something that he would disagree with, and then he would cancel you from his life in such an extreme way. He would forget about you, he would mock you, he would demonize you, it was done for him. And that was the type of man he was, he couldn't let people in. He had a fear of intimacy, which I also experienced and experienced, I inherited that <laughs> from my father. And that fear of intimacy kept people at a distance. He really couldn't trust people and the only way he would let people in his life would be because he had the perception of them serving something for him. Them being able to help him or he would benefit from having them as a friend in his life. But he kept those male friends at a distance. You see, it appeared that he had close friends. But so much of it was fake and there was so much fear and anger underneath all of the facade. And I grew up seeing this, very confused. One moment he'd have close friends over and he'd speak so highly of them and in front of them and then behind their back he would abuse them, mock them, tell us that they're no good. And this was confusing for me and I didn't understand what friendship could be. And so growing up in a violent household, leaving home, not being at home was on the top of my list of things to do. And as a teenager, even though I lived in a very strict household and it was very difficult, I would edge my way out of home. And what that ultimately looked like was seeking male friendships outside of home and being in that place of being able to receive other men and trust other men. And I chose, for whatever reason, or reasons, to do it differently to how my dad did it. And that was very encouraging for me. I was able to forge healthy male friendships from a place of truth and authenticity. I was able to be supported because I was able to be real and vulnerable with them. And again, I'm not sure exactly how and why, because logic would have said, definitely follow your father's suit. Don't trust men. I, mean, I couldn't even trust my father. My primary male role model was corrupt in his energetic, emotional, psychological, relational constitution. He was, quote unquote, broken. At least he presented that way. And there was so much confusion. Yet, I chose to be surrounded by men that saw me and men that would support me and care for me. And when I reflect back on that, their, their family lives were also broken. It's like we were looking for something outside of that family home to feel safe and we found refuge in, our, in each other and in ourselves. But that pattern did something for me. It allowed me to trust male friendships. It allowed me to go deeper into that place and be, be able to be able to be seen and witnessed by other men, to be challenged by other men in healthy ways. Now, I couldn't always allow that to transpire because it was difficult for me. Even though I did trust, it was difficult to trust. And I would become angry and abrasive myself very easily. Again, lessons that I learned from 
lessons that I learned from my father. Things that I did still kept people at a distance, but they still chose to be near me and to be with me and to be close to me. And that meant something and that allowed me to trust a little deeper and let go a little more and surrender and be more honest and be more patient and not be so defensive and protective because anytime a friend disagreed with me, my body went back to what my father would do, which was to disown that friendship completely. 20 years of friendship gone. And I had to really practice to not be that person. I've been in men's work for many, many years. And one of the biggest pain points men experience is not having solid male friendships, healthy, reliable, consistent male friendships. Men that they can trust, that they can be challenged by, called, for, called forward by told that they could be doing life just a little better and to show up to that to be supported through their difficulties and hardships to be able to share their pain and fear and not take it on their own I've been very blessed to have that experience directly for so many years and I feel deeply grateful for that men need men full stop men need healthy men and we need to know that we can trust other people so that we can begin to release the baggage that we carry, that we can be more present human beings for ourselves, for our families, for our communities, for the world, for the earth. Men need good men.